What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, or you're living under a rock, I don't know what you're waiting for, hit that subscribe button right now so you never miss another Mafia History video here on The Sit Down. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into another Mafia topic, and I'm going to start it a little different today. Over the last 10 or so years, uh, there have been many people that have established themselves as media giants. Not many can talk higher than Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy is the boss of Barstool Sports. He took the Boston area newspaper to high heights. The company is now estimated to be worth close to a billion dollars and eventually will take the lead as one of the preeminent media companies in America. Portnoy has built it from the ground up and he surrounded himself with high end people involved in media, hundreds of employees, and many great pieces of content that America can devour on everything from sports to gambling to sex and to even pizza. During his years of building his empire, he's created his own pieces of original content, including a pizza review show called One Bite. Everybody knows the rules. Millions of subscribers watch daily as Portnoy travels around Manhattan, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and other areas and tries the neighborhood pizza shops. He stands there on the corner and rates them. It has become a fan favorite to children, old people, and American citizens alike. In 2019, he would head to Buffalo to try their pizza. And during that rendezvous at a place called Lenova, he would come face to face with this individual, Joe Todaro Jr. An unsuspecting Portnoy would grade the pizza in the sevens. Not to many people that know one bite reviews, that's a good score. Todaro wasn't happy. He invited Portnoy into his pizza palace to talk turkey. Who is Joe Todaro? And why does the federal government say he's the boss and has been the boss of the Buffalo crime family and took over the leadership of his father in the 90s? The story of the Tadaros next on Sit Down Shorts. Joe Tadaro Jr., seen here on the left, was born in 1945. His father, there on the right, Joe Tadaro Sr., um, had really came up in the mafia in the 40s. Uh, in Buffalo at the time, he came under the rule of the legendary Stefano Magadino. Now, Todaro initially regarded by the name Lead Pipe Joe, and we can wonder where Joe got that nickname. We don't have to go into specifics. Todaro Sr. was a known bookmaker and loan shark, and he built up his underworld activities at a high level. He became one of the best associates in Magadino's empire. In the 50s, he would own and operate a small pizzeria called Lenova in North Tonawanda, an area of Buffalo. During that time, he built the pizzeria into a present-day pizza empire that Buffalo people know and love. In the late 50s, he was uh, regarded as a bit of a legend, quite frankly. And throughout the late 50s and early 60s, he would continue to make his way in the Buffalo Mafia. In 1967, he, alongside many other Buffalo criminals, uh, after a tip from an informant, a place that they were at was raided by the feds, a place called uh, Panaro's. It was a West Side Buffalo club and eatery owned by Tadaro's cousin, uh, Robert Panaro. At that meeting, it was a who's who of Buffalo criminals and mafia members. It also included other various uh, mob members around the country, including Sam Wings Carlisi and future boss Joe Pieri. Now, the feds would hem everyone up. Ultimately, most of the charges would not stick. Um, they looked at it as, wow, this is our little Appalachian. It was a who's who of Buffalo mob members, including the Tadaros, Joe Jr. and Joe Sr. By this point in 1967, uh, Joe Jr. was in his 20s, but he was hanging and palling around Pop and figuring out how and like what it was to be a mob member. 
in the 60s after the bust at Pinaro's, Joe Todaro Sr. was so upset that the city of Buffalo pulled his liquor license that he sued the FBI. Todaro Sr. was upset. He wanted his liquor license. And at that point would contend that his civil liberties were infringed upon and that it was because he was Italian-American. He would submit a lawsuit and was actually backed by Joe Colombo in the Italian Civil Rights League. Ultimately, the lawsuit was thrown out, uh, but Todaro Sr. was pissed off. Um, ultimately, with that uh, raid on uh, Panaro's, nothing would end up happening, but it would uncover to the FBI a who's who in Buffalo. Also seen at the meeting was the president of the local 210s, Victor Randaccio. Uh, local 210 was a laborers union in Buffalo that ultimately Joe Todaro Jr. Uh, would be a member of. And this would be a real good connection that the Daros would make over the years. In 1969, though, there was starting to become some problems in the Buffalo Mafia. Current boss Stefano Magadino was past his prime. He had began hoarding money and began to be greedy. We've seen this a lot. Joe Profacci had the same problems for the Colombo crime family in the early 60s, which led to another revolt. In the late 60s, members of the Buffalo Mafia, including Joe Todaro Sr., would lead a revolt against Magadino. Ultimately, Magadino would stop being recognized as the boss of the Buffalo Mafia. In the early 70s, uh, including Todaro, the Buffalo mob would vote on a new boss. At that point, uh, it was a new day in Buffalo. At that point, uh, the current uh, boss would become Sam the Farmer Frangimore. Frangimore would only be boss, though, for a couple of years as he would step down. Now, throughout the 70s, Todaro Sr. and Jr. continued to make their way in the Buffalo crime family. They were making and getting a lot of support from emissaries around them. They were getting a lot of respect from other families as well, including Russell Buffalino and other mob bosses throughout the country. As we know with Buffalo, it has always had withstanding connections, not only into Canada, but the Bonanno crime family, but other families as well, including the Genovese crime family. He was also very close with Rochester boss, Red Rosati as well. So Tadaro was making his way. He was a high-end member of the Buffalo mob, and eventually he would take over. That would happen in the 80s. By this point, Fran Gimore, um would step down, and the current boss was an individual named Salvatore Pieri. Pieri would be arrested in 1978, and his son, Joe Pieri, would take over. Now, uh, Joe Pieri was, uh, it was hard to get a good picture of Pieri. Pieri was the son, and he was really just boss by name only. He was not recognized at this point by the commission. And in the early 80s, Fat Tony Salerno wanted this figured out. He knew Buffalo was a moneymaker. He knew that basically as head of the commission at this point, he needed to figure out what was going on in Buffalo. He would call upon Pieri and the boss of Cleveland, um, Joe or John uh, Peanuts Front alone to New York. He would say to them basically, look, now, John Peanuts was the boss of Cleveland, but he was actually from Buffalo and knew many of these guys well. He could act as a mediator. Salerno would basically say, we got to get this all figured out. Uh, and he would actually, in the early 80s, go against Pieri and name Joe Todaro the boss of Buffalo, uh, which is interestingly enough, Todaro would also um, get a lot of respect. A lot of people enjoyed Todaro by this point, and Salerno did as well. He basically said in a wiretap that was recorded in that meeting that, quote, Todaro needs to realize he's with the big boys now. He's the new boss of Buffalo. Pierre would head back to Buffalo with his tail between his legs, and Todaro would assume control. Now, it was what Todaro did next that was actually quite interesting. He would institute his son, uh, Joe Todaro Jr., as his underboss, but he would actually make Pieri Consigliere, which was a great decision because he would ultimately quell any factions that weren't happy. Pieri still was very powerful in the family. And it was a great decision because ultimately, you know, as I said, it, it, it quelled any issues. In 1987, Pieri would actually uh, retire anyway. He was pretty old by this point, but you have to make the old man happy, as they say. By the 80s, 
The Buffalo family was a little bit more weakened, but it was still very powerful. Throughout that time, Todaro continued running his pizza empire along with his son. And by this point, Joe Jr. on the left was a high-end member in Local 210, which was the labor's union of Buffalo, who'd ultimately, though, be voted out years later. Todaro Sr. continued to run bookmaking, extortion, and loan shirking enterprises, but he also looked to grow his family as well. He sent a few people out to Las Vegas, and he also maintained a residence in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale, where he had some people as well. He would actually be seen on surveillance with, uh, in the 80s, Philadelphia boss Little Nicky Scarpo and Northeast Pennsylvania higher up, Eddie the Conductor Skiandra. So you'd have to ask yourself, to this point, Joe Todaro Sr. had never been arrested for any crime. And at this point, he was considered by the feds to be the boss of the family. Why was he seen if he's not the boss or a higher up with Nikki Scarfo and Eddie Schiandra? But again, as I said, to this point, he has never been convicted or arrested in any crime. So he did a great job at kind of eluding law enforcement. Now, by the 80s, he was also allowing multiple members of his family to get involved with the crime family as well. Uh, a place called Pharaoh's Adult Entertainment would ultimately open. That was actually run by nephews of his, the Garachi brothers. So CD Underworld Enterprises are being created and all of them kick back uh, to the Tadaro family, who again, by this point, have built a huge pizza empire in Buffalo. Ultimately in the 90s though, uh, Joe Todaro Sr. would decide to retire and hand the reins of his family uh, to his son, uh, Joe Todaro Jr. Now, in 2012, Joe Todaro Sr. would actually die uh, of old age. He was 89 years old. 89 years on earth. He was probably involved with the mafia, almost 70. To this day, Joe Todaro never spent one day in prison. Pretty incredible. Ultimately, his son would take over uh, and he would continue to run the empire as he has to this day. Now, there were some interesting things that would come out about Joe Tadar Jr. He was actually heard on wiretap in the 2000s making his current underboss, Dom Violi, a high up in the family. He would basically tell Violi that he would be the highest ranking Canadian in the history of the American mafia. Violi was from Canada, but this would set up a very good, and, and this had always been a connection. Buffalo has always been close with Canadian families, and Joe Todaro continued to make that relationship strong by making Violi his underboss. According to the feds today, Violi is still the underboss of the family. Now, interestingly enough, Joe Todaro would maintain two lives, one of which we know as probably the boss of the Buffalo mafia. Now, it's important to realize as well Joe Todaro has never been convicted of any crime. He has never been arrested as well and has never spent a day in prison. The Todaros have always maintained they are just businessmen. And in 20, in the mid 2010s, uh, the Buffalo News would actually go right to Lenovo and ask Todaro himself about his alleged mob connections. He would, quote, call it nonsense, quote, I'm in my 70s and I work seven days a week. He basically said that it was nothing more than he was just an Italian um, who was in certain businesses and that uh, certain members of, of three letter organizations uh, were trying to bring him down, basically. He would also contend that uh, when asked about his connections to drug traffickers, that uh, they could say anything they want about me. But when they say narcotics, that bothers me. Quote, I am totally against narcotics. I see what it's done to people. He would also talk about the fact that he's had a business since the 50s with his father and that they, quote, employ 150 people. They also have a production facility in Chicago, New York, that makes their famed chicken wings. As we know, Buffalo Wings, um, they built an empire. It's that simple. And what Joe Tadar has actually done in the community is quite incredible. He's become the official partner of the Buffalo Bills as far as pizza is concerned. He's given countless uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars away to charities and to, to poor people. He's involved in pizza drives and all sorts of great things. There's nothing to contend that Joe Todaro is not a very good individual and a businessman. The truth of the matter, though, is there is extreme evidence that he is also part of a certain Italian-American subculture. Again, though, 
We can't say that, though, because he's never truly been convicted. I want to end this story back to Dave Portnoy. As I said, in 2019, Portnoy would head up to Lenovo to review the pizza. Now, in that video, Portnoy would rate it, I think, a 7.3. And during this filming, Joe Todaro, seen here on the right, basically walks up to Portnoy and starts talking to him. Uh, his phone would ring and, and Portnoy would joke and have fun. Now, Portnoy was mostly uh, unknown that Tadara was who he was. And I think to this day, he probably has no idea. Now, as many of you know, I work for Barstool. Uh, I know Dave well. He hired me. Um, I've been around him many times. Um, and he once called me the greatest. Uh, the, what, no matter of fact, he called me the most arrogant gambler he's ever seen. But he knows who I am. I know who he is. I have never asked him about this. I'd like to it someday, and I'd love to know if he actually knew who this guy was. But during the connection, he, Todaro, seemed visibly upset by the score. In fact, he would invite Portnoy and his cameraman, Frankie Borelli, into the eatery to have some food. And Todaro would be visibly upset that Portnoy rated his pizza in the sevens and, quote, said, don't put the video out. Now, by this point, uh, Portnoy had already been recording, and it was going to go out. They would have buffalo wings barbecue wings. And then Tadaro, like a good grandfather would, began to be pretty attached to Portnoy. He asked him to take a tour of the facility. He threw uh, him down into the basement and they uh, talked turkey about his uh, plastic cups and plastic plates. He really showed that he was just an old guy that just wanted to talk to somebody. Now, during the exchange on the left, you can see Tadaro in a, a windowless building, which was the basement of the operation. Uh, during the exchange, Portnoy would mention that he didn't want to be, quote, whacked and mention the word mafia. Todaro turned around and looked at Portnoy and said, don't say that word, and then glanced and left. There was also some weird back and forth between Todaro III, who was Todaro's son, and Portnoy, where they talked about um, different things and certain mafia lingo. Uh, it would end in a weird exchange in a bathroom with Tadaro Jr. and Portnoy, where Tadaro calls his grandson giddy with excitement that Portnoy was in his bathroom. Uh, it was kind of an odd exchange, though funny. I urge you, if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube and type in Dave Portnoy Lanova, and you can watch the entire exchange there. But it shows the continued um, excitement of Tadaro to kind of maintain that he is this Underworld figure, but he's this great businessman as well. He's also been featured in multiple other forms of entertainment, including a song by Benny the Butcher, a famed rapper from Buffalo called Broken Bottles. In that uh, song, Benny the Butcher would claim, quote, those Sopranos had fiends smoking white out Sprite soda bottles. Mob boss like I'm Joe Todaro, my dollars long and my plug got a farm like he old McDonald. The truth of the matter is, multiple facets of the Buffalo community are pretty much aware of who Joe Todaro is. The truth is, though, he'll probably die in his own home with his family and millions of dollars. He's done the unthinkable. He's managed to run a successful business and possibly be the head of an American mafia and never go to prison. The Todaros are something legends are made of. And they're just another story in the American Mafia outprint. As always, if you enjoy my videos, please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.